stuff. And generally, I'm going I'm to use the word generally, cellular networks are safe. Um, and so if I was an app creator, I'd be like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. I won't send sensitive data over Wi-Fi. I'll make sure it's over the, the cellular network because it's, it's a lot harder to tap. And so I was like, I'm going to buy a femtocell. I'm going to intercept that. Um, and then I bought an Android phone because I was like, this is cheap on eBay. And then I already had the router and the laptop and the internet. Well, it turns out, after doing a bit of research, and I, I didn't delve too much into this, that app creators aren't that shysty yet. Um, all I had to do, I didn't have to, to register for the, for the cell network. I was just able to pop up on my phone, turn on Wi-Fi, get to the Android market, and start playing around, which was absolutely great. So I created this amazing testing methodology where I would take the applications, I would purchase and install them, I would have initial usage, regular usage, and then uninstalling the application for each application because then I would know what traffic's going on at exactly what point. And then during the uh, operating system tests, I would have first usage, so when you're first installing your phone, light usage, and then regular idle time, and then when I've reset the phone, right? I mean, it seems like I would cover just about every aspect of every application and the OS so that I would make sure I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss any shysties that went on. Because I thought to myself, you know, if I were an OS creator, every 30 minutes I'd want to know where you are at. Or if I'm an application owner, I might be like, hey, every 15 minutes, uh, who have you called in the last 15 minutes? Um, so this was my amazing original testing methodology. What actually happened was I just took a massive PCAP file for each app, uh, SSL stripped it, TCP dumped it, and made a drinking game out of it. In true DEF CON fashion. But you guys weren't hung over, so maybe that's not true DEF CON fashion. Uh, and so for the apps that I tested, I thought, all right, I'm going I'm to do a mix. Um, I'm going to do Angry Birds, uh, as I used earlier, this really sketchy Chinese app. I don't read Chinese, and I was like, well, that looks sketchy. <laughs> uh, it's kind of my, my sketchy test. Uh, and then random applications that no one uses, so I, like, I scrolled a whole bunch of pages down. I got the main ones, Facebook. I got just browsing the web on Google, and that actually, actually uh, happened by accident, but I found some fascinating things, so I decided to keep it in. Uh, IntelliPilot, which is a, uh, if I, uh, an airline pilot's app, uh, application for using logbooks. Mousetrap, which is a game. Pandora. Redphone, which is an amazing application uh, created by Moxie's Marlin Spike. And if you guys don't know of this, it's a, it's a little app on your Android phone that you can have secure conversations with other people. Uh, and I thought, you know, I like Moxie, but I kind of want to see if he's doing anything there. We'll, f <laughs> we'll find out more about that later. Um, and then Words with Friends and Zynga Poker, because I'm absolutely addicted to Words with Friends. Uh, and if any of you guys play Scrabble, you'll know. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I, I digress. Um, and so it's, it's obviously a work in progress. I have a lot of applications I'd like to test. I have a lot of different operating systems I'd like to test. And um, basically what I've been trying to work towards is a standard methodology so that I can kind of hammer through it when I'm not working, which seems to be rare. So what I have to work with is a bunch of PCAP files and SSL strip outputs. And the reason I did this was, is because I figured, you know, if I'm an attacker, it's really easy just to run SSL strip. So let's just assume SSL is useless. Uh, and so I decided to take all the information that if someone were attacking you, or if they were a corporation, et cetera, would have. Now later on, I want to see absolutely everything sent back to the company. I'm going to add a root certificate to the phone and just collect all the information. But for right now, I've got a bunch of packet captures and SSL strip outputs, and that alone has proved very interesting. So let's start analyzing. With each packet capture, I, uh, I first peered around with it in Wireshark. I analyzed some of the conversations, some of the IPs being addressed. I ran strings, ran grep, pretty easy Linux stuff. Uh, and then I did some DNS play, and I did some Argus flows. So first, Wireshark. If you guys haven't done any uh, network analysis, Wireshark is kind of the de facto GUI tool. It's really nice just to kind of poke around and scroll, and you can just visually look at and see, oh, this is HTTP traffic, DNS traffic, et cetera. And it's a good starting point, kind of give you a feel for the lay of the land. Um, but command line tools are more powerful. And so I moved to T Shark. And so I wanted to basically read the packet captures, look around, see what was happening, uh, look at some of the hex, what's being talked to, and, and the conversations that are happening. And so I ran T-Shark, it's up on there, and I tried to see what are these applications talking to? Who are these applications? Who, I mean, who are these applications talking to? What services are they using? Who are they sharing it with? And then I, who is like a mofo? So if we were to take one specific example, we can look at 
Zynga. Uh, how many people here know who Zynga is? Oh, nice. Well, I, I should assume this is DEF CON. You guys are smart. Uh, and to reiterate, for those that didn't raise their hands, Zynga is kind of the new mogul, if you will, for Android games. Most games on Android and uh, Open Faint on Apple, or yeah, I think it's Open Faint. I'm, in any case, Zynga, Zynga makes a large number of those idle time games. Those, those games when you're kind of sitting down, as I started, stated earlier, uh, and you're just kind of, you know, you don't have anything to do and you want a game that you can play for five minutes or you're on a conversation that you're a little bored, you can play for five minutes. And they're wildly popular because people have a lot of idle time. And so I took a look at Zynga and I was like, who is Zynga talking to? Well, if you look at the screen, and I'm not going to read each one out, there's a lot. There's Tapjoy Ads, Midas, Tapjoy Ads, uh, Facebook, 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 um, Facebook, Macromedia, Adobe. And when you look at this, there's a couple on there that you're curious. I mean, this was for Zynga Poker. And so you're playing poker on your phone, and you don't really expect for it to call out to Midas.mobi. What does this company do? What does MKHOJ do? What does Tapjoy ads do? What information is being sent to these third parties that you have absolutely no idea? And this is where we draw in on the privacy element. When you downloaded that application for poker, did you really understand that you were going to be sending your statistics, your Android version, your location potentially, to Zynga Poker? And why do they need to know it? So this kind of like this really begs the question, what is being sent on your phone without you knowing? I mean, now, I mean, now that I brought the question up, you guys are thinking like, oh, what apps do I have? Well, one of the easiest, quick and dirty ways to look at uh, a packet capture file and seeing where it goes is strings. Strings just basically outputs text strings that are inside the packet capture file, or any file for that matter. But basically what I did was is I looked for interesting things. And you'll see on here, one of the first things I did was the um, HTTP trying to see what websites are being contacted. And then I had a couple key phrases. And I did this for a couple reasons. One, I don't want to have to go through every packet capture file trying to figure out what password was what and what I was going through. So I made some basic things to look for. I made woot defcon my password. And I made uh, my username droid.net.foren at gmail.com. And for those of you thinking, oh, he left the password and he just displayed it. I'm going to go log in. Yeah, I did. I don't care. Um, <laughs> have at it. And so basically, I'm not using it anymore. Um, basically, what I did was is I had I put these kind of like little like these cookies within the packet capture file, so I could instantly group for grab for Woot Defcon, right? Because I was so excited this was coming up. I was making my password that. And I could instantly see where my password was shown. I could instantly see, rather than trying to figure out what's their password field called, or is it in their get parameter, their post parameter, whatever, I can just go, is woot, dot, or woot defcon going over the wire? I also did it for my email address. Well, when we look at it, woot defcon is definitely going over Facebook. Obvious. I mean, you have to log into your Facebook to actually get the alerts that you want to see about your best friend and their update on how they're so excited for it Friday. Um, but, what we didn't realize is, is that Facebook, Words with Friends, and Zynga pa uh, uh, Poker are all sending my email. Again, something to be assumed. But, but beyond that, uh, any attacker can capture this. And this, is, and this is where I really tie in the privacy element. And this is where privacy kind of intercedes with what I'm doing. So we have it to where, as an attacker or as a man in the middle, I now know potentially your password for your Facebook, your Facebook URL domain name, um, et cetera, all because you're playing poker. I now know potentially where you're located, potentially what you're doing, potentially where you're at. And so when we delve in with words with friends, we can see a lot of very interesting things. And so this is an output that I, I got from running strings on words with friends. And again, this is, all, this is all very simple stuff. I mean, I'm not doing extremely advanced packet analysis, but if you guys would like to know more about that, I would highly recommend the Network Forensics Contest. But this is, I mean, this is quite simple. If you, if you have a, a Linux VM or a Linux box, you can all do this. And so I ran strings on the capture file that I had, and I, and I found this. I found words with friends is sending a couple of interesting things. One, they're sending the network that I'm on. So they know whether I'm using AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc. So now they know that my phone is Verizon. They know 
that well, and and they know that I'm a millennial, which I found was kind of weird. I think they're guessing, um, but they also don't know what my build version is for my Android. They know what uh, app server I'm using, which I'm guessing, and, and, and some of these are hypotheses and some of these are fact. Uh, but on this, I'm guessing that they know where I'm located based on my, my uh, distance to the ad server. They know what screen resolution I'm using, uh, what language I'm using, etc. And for my testing, some of this didn't quite um, show up because I hadn't fully set up the phone, so they weren't able to send a couple of things because I didn't have anything in there. Um, but it, it, it definitely lets you know what they're, what they're sharing. And so when we continue on, okay, well, they've got my email. They also have my device ID. They also know that my last word was about, and I got 18 points for it. Um, but that's to be obvious. Again, sorry, I, I thought jokes would go over better at 10 a.m. Uh, but, but in any case, so they know the, the timestamp of when I'm accessing it. They know my email. They know my device ID, et cetera. And what's important about this? Well. I can only assume that my device ID is only my device. I can also assume, or I feel safe assuming, that Zynga has a number of different applications, and in every application, they know that my device is using that. They know that I'm using their game one, two, three, and four. But then we tie this in with kind of a larger ecosystem issue, is that advertising is kind of the, I, I would almost argue, one of the largest eroders of privacy, because they want to know as much as possible. They want to know exactly who you are so they can market directly to you. And so we take it from Zynga and we move to a higher level of the advertising agencies that Zynga uh, leases out. Well, now that they have my di device ID from Zynga, they can also tie it in with maybe if I'm at a website, if they can pull my device ID. Maybe if they're elsewhere, they can pull my device ID. And then all of a sudden, they can tie all these disparate, disparate pieces of information that I never really thought someone else would be collecting, and they're starting to put it together. Now, continuing on the theme of strings, and, I, and this is the one that I, I had no idea and I really do not appreciate, when you, on your Android phone, go to Google, and if your Wi-Fi is on, Google instantly knows, and it sends back to home all of the Wi-Fi access points around you. These are the people that live around me. They're creative people. Uh, I mean, and how many of you knew, every time you're going, oh, what's around me? I want to Google for something. Boom, open up a web browser. Oh, my Wi-Fi is on. Oh, Google actually knows all the Wi-Fi access points that are um, beaconing, right? No one really thinks of this, and they think, oh, oh, well, that's fine. I mean, what's some Wi-Fi access points? But if you guys have heard of Skyhook, what Skyhook basically does is it uses Wi-Fi to geolocate people. And Google's trying to essentially squeeze Skyhook out of the market, or at the very least not pay them, because they're going, OK, so if you're at this location and these wireless access points are around you, if you're using an application and you can see, also, like if someone else is using this application and they can see this Wi-Fi, they also know where you're at. And so you don't even have your GPS on. Let's say you're a super paranoid person. You're like, no, 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 no. My GPS is off. Google will not find me. Well, now they know what wireless IPs are around you. They also know, because of those wireless IPs, exactly where you're located. Kind of scary. What's also sent to uh, Google, and I totally, totally anonymize this, um, the X's are me because that's at my exact address. I, 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 uh, I was looking through the captures, and I was like, devlock? What's that? Is that like the, uh, my, my, my phone is locked? It's actually device location. And when I have my GPS on, and I am browsing to Google, and mind you, I am just browsing to Google, they instantly know where exactly I am, pinpointed to a, a dot. I, I kid you not. It's, it's, I mean, I remember back when GPS was kind of sketchy, you'd be like, oh, you're in this area. But they are, you are standing right here to that many X's worth of latitudinal, latitude and longitudinal lines. It's scary. They're also sending a bunch of other information that I haven't decoded yet, but I plan on looking through. But at the same time, I mean, there's a lot of easy stuff to be picked out right away. I mean, why does Google need to know my specific exact location when I'm browsing? And, and again, you could say, oh, well, it's, it's useful because they need to know when you search for pizza, what pizza 